Hey guys, this is John Ward with the Appalachian Channel and I'm back at an old general store here in Anderson County, Tennessee. It's located here in what's called Charlie's Branch in the backside of Anderson County on Highway 116. This highway is kind of a motorcycle tour route and uh, people use this road to uh, come to go on motorcycle rides because it's curvy. Uh, it's beautiful and scenic here in the mountains and uh, we're gonna go inside like we always do. So we're gonna meet the guy that owns the store. He's owned it for 40 years. His name is Scotty Phillips. His grandpa originally started this store in 1936 and it originally started actually across the street over here and actually started with this little service station you see here later. They had a store across the river. Uh, originally there was no road here. The only way you could get to Charlie's Branch was through railroad and in the early 20s W.L. Coker moved here from Scott County, Campbell County area. He started working at five years old, uh, Mr. Coker did, in the coal mines because his dad died in 1900 when he was five. He started working in the coal mines and he ended up eventually coming here and settling across the river there and uh, we're going to look at it here in just a minute. I'm going to show it to you and there's no swinging bridge here. I'm going to show you the swinging bridge. And Scotty runs school buses still to this day, and his grandfather did back in the 30s, uh, run school buses. And Scotty's gonna talk about that a little bit. This building we see over here, the blue and white store, was a service station, but it originally started out as a place for the kids in Charlie's Branch here to come in in the wintertime and stay warm until Mr. Coker could bring the bus by and pick them up. So we're gonna go over and look at the, uh, the old gas station and we're gonna look at the store and go inside. We're gonna go on the swinging bridge. Don't go nowhere. I'm gonna tell you how to find this at the end of the video. So stick right here with me. So the store was built in about six months from what Scotty tells me, and um, I'm not for sure how old the sign is up there, but uh, soon been on it there a minute. W.L. Coker, New River General Store. New River is right here behind us. So down there is New River, and we're gonna go over to the swinging bridge and go across that to show you that. But uh, we're gonna look at a few things before we go in and talk to Scotty some more. Um, this is where Scotty first started working. He started working at 10 years old for his uh, grandpa. And right here in this was a service station, turned into a service station. As I was talking about a few minutes ago, this was originally built just for a place to keep the kids warm back in the 30s and probably they had gas here for the buses they had a couple buses and scotty still sells gas here to this day um, so maybe because they had gas here for the buses they was working on the buses here kind of turned into a gas station he started selling it to other people and at that time the road was fairly new here and the original store was across the street and then in 1936 W.L. Coker built this three-story building that has a basement. He built his living quarters upstairs, and there's an outside door right there that you can see on the right side that they would go into. So, uh, well, here's a light that uh, I guess people use at night to see the pump gas a little bit, but. Well, that gentleman's heading back across the bridge. This bridge is operated by the county, Anderson County, for these people that live across the river here. Uh, they've got a little 
bridge that'll get them across until the river gets up. Now this is New River, the beginnings of it here. This is the same river that my brother's property's on that uh, y'all have seen me film at before. And I have taken pictures here with my boys over the years back when they was little, but let's walk out here on the bridge. How long has it been since you've walked out on an old timey swinging bridge? It's here for a real purpose to help these people get across when the river's up and in the winter time it does get up. So this bridge has been replaced three times over the last probably hundred years or so. I'm sure at points it gets uh, old and the boards need to be placed. The metal probably gets rusty. And uh, there is New River. Here's some solar lights for people at night to come across. And uh, this is pretty neat to uh, find one of these bridges. I, I'm sure if you ever lived on the other side of a creek or small river like this one, you might have walked on one of these. My mom did when she was a kid up there in Beach Fork and uh, pretty long bridge. Uh, don't think I'm gonna go on any further, but uh, check that old Nova out. Uh, not good on cars, but somebody can tell us what date that is. That's probably, uh, I'm gonna guess 72, but somebody's gonna laugh and correct me on that, but uh, pretty cool, I like it. So, Scotty's dad, uh, worked in the coal mines. Scotty's grandpa worked in the coal mines. And uh, the store originally started on the other side of the river here. Uh, I'm not for sure. Scotty still owns some of this property on this side of the river. He bought some of the property. His papa owned quite a bit of it back in the day in the early 20s. And uh, we can kind of see the back of the store right there. And we're gonna walk back up there to the store and uh, go in and talk to Scotty. So, been out there looking at the old swinging bridge. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So that was uh, there back in the day, originally when your grandpa was across the, uh, the river there. Right. So. Did they, they, they probably didn't have that low level bridge or did it just come across on rocks or? Uh, I'm not sure how they built that. I'm not sure if Papa built that or the CCCs. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of history here. Your family's been here uh, on New River. Uh, this area, you call this particular area? Charlie's Branch. Charlie's Branch, okay. Then on up the road's Rosedale. Uh -huh. and, uh, and you've been here for 40 years yourself running this store since you was 19 years old. Right. And uh, they've even, I've seen an article over here, I saw it last time, I think uh, Knoxville News Sentinel, was that who it was, or yeah, Journal? It could have been, yeah, yeah. either Clinton Courier or Knoxville one. Okay, they wrote an article about you some time ago, many years yeah. ago. What year was that, you remember? It was in the 80s. In the 80s. Sure what year, yeah. So back then, it's still a rarity to see a, a, a country store or a general store still putting it on the wall. Well, I guess that's what it says. Scotty right. put it on the wall is the name of the article. And that's because you still take a tab, right. write, write, let people write it down, or you write it down and they pay you once a month or whatever. So that's something we don't see no more in these little stores. No, no, no that's the thing of the past. <laughs> um, I noticed you have a lot of stuff, looks like where people would take camping or into the mountains, a lot of canned stuff, yeah. potted meats and different things like that, bread, crackers, snacks, stuff they can camp to See a lot of people buying that to take back to ride on yeah, the trails and stuff. Yeah, size and stuff, yeah. Yeah, there was some out there getting gas just a little while ago. Yeah. They said they've been coming down for about six years. So they, I guess that's kind of helped the economy maybe a little oh bit. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's it's boomed, yeah. I mean, they're coming from everywhere, everywhere. Those people in here, like saying, uh, moved up here from uh, Aus not Australia. Uh, New Zealand, I New think? New Zealand, yeah, yeah. New Zealand. Yeah. Right. They like this, uh, these Appalachian area oh, mountains, yeah. these pretty mountains yeah. here in ten East Tennessee. Yeah. A lot of people from California come in here too. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, um, but uh, we we talked there a little while ago about your grandpa, how he started this store. He started out 
over in Campbell County, maybe, or Scott County, uh, working as a water boy at five years old. Right, in coal mines, yeah. In coal mines. Uh, uh, his dad passed away. Uh, Papa was born in 1895, and his dad died in uh, 1900. And so he went to work to help his mother and stuff. You know, he had sisters and brothers. and. Uh, but so your he did his part. Great grandpa died when your grandpa was five. Right. So I put him to having to work at five years old. Right. And that's all he could do, you know, water boy in the mines. So what would people think today if we put a five oh. year old to work? <laughs> Child labor, you <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> sure that's that was life back then. People did what they had to do to survive. Right. Yeah. Well it seems like it uh, made him a hard worker oh, because yeah. he moved here uh, on the river and New River. Uh, Charlie's Branch is what this area is called. Right. And uh, Started a store, maybe you don't know it's so far back you don't know if the coal mine, but you think the store came, you might have come yeah. here to start a store. Yeah, the store was first, and then they started the logging, and uh, you know, Papa didn't log, but that was the next phase when the railroad came up through here. The logging was first, and then when that played out, they started the coal mine, and that's when Papa he had a mule mines and had you know I know some family, and I'm not sure that everybody that worked with them was family or not, but. Uh, they started loading the coal out on the rail then, and this was when the first coal was starting to hit the rail. Papa missed it by the first day, by one day being the first man to load a train, load a coal out, a car load. There's a cook man beat him by one day. Papa, something had tore up and he hadn't had it, got it fixed yet. So, so he did the coal mine for a while, but the store originally started across the river. It didn't right. start because it wasn't even a road at that time right. on this side of the river. Yeah. You were telling me the only way to get to Charlie's Branch, I guess, was by, was rail. by, by railroad. Yeah. Uh, you don't have no cooking oil, have you? Yeah, it's on the bottom of the first shelf right there on the back side. I'm baking a cake. And I have to have some more. Well, I'm going to for you. I bet you have some good memories coming here as a kid, don't you? Yeah, his grandpa was then. Right. Uh, I bet oh, you remember seeing this fellow grow up a little bit then, don't you? Oh, yes, I know him well. <laughs> him and his daddy, his mommy. All of us here was coal miners then, back in the days. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, his papa was doing coal, uh, having the mule mine over there on the other yeah. side of the river. And then he had the bus. Little Charlie Phillips driving the school bus. He drove it for many years, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he drove it for Papa and Daddy, I think. Yeah, well, yeah, he and Daddy. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, for many years. He ran the store, too. After he uh, ran the bus run, he'd come here. Park the here store. Until two or three o'clock, I think. Yeah. It was always fun to go to the store, I bet, back then, wasn't it, to get something? Yeah. Uh, back in them days, we had an RC and a moon pie. Yeah. Uh, back in them days. I see you still have a lot of RCs back there. You oh, got yeah. you got them stacked. Is that something you still sell a lot of? Oh yeah. yeah. Is that your most popular drink or? Uh, yeah. 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 Moon pie back in them days, if us kids had a, any extra money, mommy and daddy would let us get a moon pie or RC. Did you ever collect up bottles and bring them in to? And we bring our bottles back get a deposit on it and then we buy some moon pie and an RC. <laughs> the good old days, wasn't it? Back when things were a little bit simpler back then, wasn't it? Yeah. Your dad, uh, did he work here at the store and run the store? Did he work No, at, he always did the station out there. The station next yeah. door. So that's where you uh, started out working. You was talking right. about changing oil and I, I see a big lift still out there on yeah. the ground. Is that what you used? Yeah. Used that lift to change the oil. They'd come and yeah. So you're one of the first express oil changes around oh, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that was interesting. So you how you said you had to stand on a bucket to reach the to get the yeah, plug the, out of the oil. No metal milk crates. You know when they bring four gallons of milk is in a metal milk crate. Yeah. You know? So we had those out there, 
and I couldn't reach, get under the grease rack, I couldn't reach up, so I had to stand on that crate there, then I could reach the oil filler and take the oil plug out, and yep. do it like that. I think I got, they paid me like a, I believe it was two dollars to do their oil change and grease it and all that, and then I got paid a dollar for fixing tires and stuff. Well, so your, your uh, W.L. Coker was your grandpa, right? right? And he he started working at five years old, and then probably in his teens he moved here maybe, you right. think? Yeah, and then yeah he, it would have been his upper teens. Him and his mama was already married. I'm not sure the year they got married, they came up here before 1920. 1920. Uh, yeah, he worked down there at a coal temple. I think probably his whole life of growing up is, you know, the five, from five all the way up to he moved up here, he's coal mine related. So he worked hard. That's about, oh, yeah. we don't see that nowadays. No. No, people don't work like they used to, but it seems like, you know, we, we find out as I talk to you that he had the store, then apparently maybe bought some property there that had the coal mine, the mule mine, and that's a cool picture that we got there. That's, don't see many pictures of mules, especially with right. the history right here related to this store. Right. Then when they put the road on this side of the river, they put a, a bus line, he started running the bus back in the, what, that been the 30s, early 30s? Uh, probably, yeah, mid thirty something like that, yeah. Yeah, but you like to have one of them old buses back there from oh, the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool to have oh, one of them yeah. old 30 model buses. I think it's those, like 36 passengers or something like that. This garage that used to be on the side of the store here, we've got pictures where you can see the hood of that bus sticking out. And you, know, you can look at the size of the buses today, you couldn't get it back into an area like that. I mean, it's too high and too wide. Right, yeah. So. It's coal mining, running the store, and running buses. So he, he was a busy fellow. He probably did some other things too, did he? Well, he. It, it, I've got an old school bench over here, and I think it came out of the uh, Hopewell School out here, New Hope. I'm not sure what the name of this school was in Charlie's Branch. But Mom said he, he sold shoes and clothes and everything, and it was like the Walmart of its day, appliances and all that stuff. But he had that uh, desk sitting back there at the back of the store, mom said that you know people try on their shoes there and stuff like that, but it's also the place that, you know, if somebody was wanting, needing to borrow some money or was wanting to sell property, the business, stuff like that outside the store, they'd go back there and sell it. And then Papa had papers drawn up, you know, a contract, this is what it'd be. It's kind of like the local stuff. community banker. Bank. <laughs> it was everything. They did a little bit of everything back there. Well, he, uh, he absolutely did a great job with uh, building the, the store. I guess he probably laid it yeah. out and they lived upstairs. Yeah. He started building that store, the store here in the spring. By October, they was moving in it. October 1st, they moved in it. But they, he had two brick layers, land brick, and then he hired you know, local people here that they'd go get sand out of the river down there, mix some mortar up. And, I mean, they was just laying brick constantly. He was, he was going up fast, and the bottom of it was is three layer brick thick and the top is two layers thick. So it's a built building. I mean, you'll not find a crack in the walls anywhere in it. Yeah, now, did your grandpa and grandma live here till they passed away or did they No, no, he out? retired in 61 and he had built a house up beside the schoolhouse up there and for the purpose of just teachers, you know, being able to come in here and live and work at the school. You know, so, so when he retired, he moved into that house. And then the lady and her husband who took over moved upstairs. There was teachers who boarded with him here too before I guess he built that house up there. And my mom told me a tale. Uh, there was two teachers come in, a husband and wife team, and you know, both of them were teachers. And my mom told Papa uh, before they had supper the night, she said, Lewis, she said, don't put cornbread in your, chocolate, in your uh, buttermilk. She said, these people think we're backwards. And so, Papa never said yay or nay. That night they sat there and got their supper eating. Papa reached over and grabbed him a piece of cornbread, started breaking up his buttermilk. And that teacher, the man, he looked over at his wife. He said, "See there, so Mr. Coker does it too." <laughs> <laughs> so she did. She thought that was a country thing. Yeah. That they, people in the country did. So yeah, that's uh, your, your grand, uh, grandpa was a hard worker. Started out at five yeah. years old and move over here and kind of. Kind of started this community, I guess, really is the main hub in this community. He was. They called him when he first came up here because he came from, you know, Scott County, Campbell County area down there. They called him a foreigner. Oh, really? Yeah, because he's he comes from a different yeah, county. Yeah, he's from a different county. <laughs> it's across the county line, so he is a foreigner. Looks like he finally uh, made friends with people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I noticed you was talking about the, 
the little the blue and white store has been there forever. And you, you were talking about your grandpa. It wasn't really a store originally. He built it for what? Tell us about that. He built it for when they started taking the kids to the Rosedale School up here. They started closing these little one-room schools down, and he got a bus contract with the county. And so he built that building that had a stove in it and stuff for the kids to in Charlie's branch to gather up and wait on him to come back up the river and pick them up on the school bus. So it's originally just like a little uh, heated bus stop. And then they started selling gas, so right. it turned into a gas station, and you yeah. came along and started changing yeah. oil there. Did, yeah. you pump, did you pump a lot of gas? Oh yeah, and we did, we pumped all of them. My brothers and sisters, there's nine of us. So, you know, everybody had to work in it, and they got married, and you know, I didn't have to work in it until all of them left home, then that threw me in when I was about 10, 12 years old. I remember uh, mom and dad would go home and leave me out there like a 12 year old, you know, selling the gas and doing all that stuff now. And, and you think today, how many 12 year olds could you turn loose to do something like that? But that's just the way you was raised, you knew this stuff. Right. Yeah. I grew up in it, watched them and all that. And then at night time, when it's time to close, they'd come back out and close out the station. Come down, see if you did everything right. Right. And they'd check on me every now and then. <laughs> well, so that's how you ended up at 19 years old. You bought the people out that had bought the, their supplies, their merchandise. Yeah. Your papa still owned the store and had leased it. He, when he retired, he leased it. They retired in 82. And you was 19. And what happened? Uh, the lady who ran the store, she approached me about it. I was janitoring up to the school at that time. And she was wanting to retire and want to know if I'd be interested in taking it over. And I said, Mr. Orton, I said, I don't have any money. And she said, I know who you are. She said, I watched you grow up and said, I know your parents. She said, you can pay me by the month until you get it paid off. And so that's what I did. So what was that like when you first came in here and took over running the store? Was it quite a it bit was going different. on back in, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I think when I first took over, there was 800 people lived over here. And today we're down a little bit below 200. But, uh, you know, it was it was different from going from oil and fan belts and filters and stuff like that coming out here to the grocery line. But, you know, it, it, I adapted to it. You know, it just, I tried to get new things that, you know, maybe she hadn't got and stuff like that. I mean, uh, they just, I don't know, just fell into it, I guess. You've been here 40 years now. Yep. Yeah. And how long do you think you're going to be here? Buddy, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 59 now. I, you know, I can't imagine not being here. I've done it all my life. But, you know, being in the store like this, it ties you down. You don't, you don't have time to do anything. You know, it's, it's, it consumes your life. You know, and do you do the bus? Do you run the buses yourself? Do you have somebody? Yeah, you, I run one bus. I've got two buses, and I run one, and then this lady drives the other one for me. So you, you kept on the family uh, tradition of uh, running the bus. Yeah, in the it area. must be in the bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, so you run the bus and the, the local general store here in the area, and then you also have a campsite, or a, you have a bed and breakfast, or no right. a Airbnb, I guess right. is what it would yeah. be. It's in the old school. Right. right. When they closed it, they closed it in ninety or ninety one, and. All the schools over here, anything that was built basically was built on land company land. So when it ceased being a school, the land company got it back. Now, me and the land agent was pretty good buddies, and I mean, he tormented me to death. He, he'd get out of the truck over there, come across Road Green, and I know he's going to start something. But anyhow, when they took it over, we had a little argument about that it wasn't uh, the land companies, it was the counties. Well, he said, no, it's the land companies. So I called the superintendent of schools and asked him about it. He said, Jeff, yeah, when it ceased being a school, it fell back to the land company. So it went on there for a little while, and he told me they was going to sell it. And asked me, he said, if you want to buy it, you want to have to or get on the, you know, get off the pot. You want to have to do something, I'm going to sell it. So I bought it. And then it sat there for several, well, for years, and we tried community center in it and stuff like that. And then uh, when that stopped, the vandals started kind of hitting it. We fixed it back up. And they would have uh, festivals there every year. And uh, then they stopped that, and we thought, well, we're going to have to do something with it, or people just tear it up again. So me and a buddy I went to school with got the idea to uh, put that in it. So we have several rooms now that we rent to the people's on cybersides, and they come from everywhere. I mean, every state in the union, just about. And, you know, they all love it. They love this area. You was talking to me earlier about the the motorcycle route through here, the scenic route. Right. It's called the Devil's Triangle. Right. I know when I was here a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday to try to find you, there was just 
motorcycle after motorcycle oh, came yeah. through. Yeah, in the summertime, it's, I mean, his, they've been like they have the Honda Hoot and stuff like that. But sometimes this is, they'll put them on this route here, this is part of the route. And I remember one time in particular, sitting out there in front, and they started coming by, well, you know, you tried to wave at him, well, he finally just got tired of waving, and there's so many going by, I got dizzy, I just had to leave my head back, <laughs> let them go by. I mean, it was just one after the other. I'd say there's probably two or three hundred motorcycles in that one group. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty through here, especially in the summertime. Yeah. Yeah. Near the store. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah started. Yeah. And, um, you ended up working there, and, and the people that run the store here decided that she's a hard worker, I guess. You figured that you'd take care of the store, and, and your papa still owned the building, so I guess at that time you ended up maybe having to lease it from your papa or whatever so you could take it over. And, he had passed away. Oh, had he already passed yeah. away when you took it over? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. My mom had it then. Okay. Your mom had done got it. Okay. Is your mom still living? No, she passed away in 2014. Okay. Sorry to hear that. Um, so did they live in this whole area after they retired, did you say, after your grandpa retired and then your mom and dad, did they stay in the area? They moved out for one year after uh, they shut the station down for one year and daddy had had a stroke and he was on a blood thinning medicine and then daddy left him on it too long or something but it caused a bowel blockage and they had to do emergency surgery on him. Well, his blood was so thin that they had to get him blood plasma to thicken his blood for the surgery. And that blood plasma, they gave him hepatitis C. And so he lived a year and died. And then mom oh. came back and ran it till 2000. She was 74 years old. 74. She Run the gas station. She's yeah. still selling gas over here. 74. Is anybody helping her at that time? No. no. She did it on her own. No, just this gas back then. It'd be hard. It seems like it'd been hard to make it just on gas with the grocery well, store here. She sold, you know, motor oil, and she sold all that, anything to deal with the service station side stuff. I didn't sell any of that stuff. Once you come here to work to take over the store, did, did somebody take over doing oil changes over there? Or? I had pretty well stopped. Stopped at yeah. that time. Couldn't find nobody work as hard as you could be. No, no, no. I was, I was the man. Well, that right there is something we was talking about earlier about you still uh, having uh, tickets for people. I've seen that when I've been here before. That boy didn't even speak to you. Just brought it, brought it in, laid yeah, it on the counter. Dad called me and told me what he needed. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've seen them when I've been here before. They just come by and hold it up and show you what they got and walk on out right. the door. Yeah. <laughs> Part of you don't see that. The dollar stores nowadays, it's popping up everywhere. The people work there to care less. Uh, what your name is or where you're from, they're yeah, just gonna employ you. It's nothing personal about it anymore. It's, it's business item. Yep. So you see, you said that in, back in 82, there's eight, up to 800 people in the area. Right. right here in this community, now there's only 200. Yeah, a little less than 200. So the coal mining died out over the years and little by little people filtered out to where they could get. Right. Well, I, I think, you know, back when the coal mines first came in, everything was by hand. You know, you dynamited, and took it out, pick and shovel and all that. Then is, uh, you know, they had all the coal camps up and down the river. And, you know, I, I know at one time there, they was, in 39, I think it was, there was 2,900 people lived here. And each community, it was like its own town. They had their own school, a doctor's office, and stuff like that. So, you know, you basically, although the valley, it's 14 miles through the valley here, you went through several different towns, just like going from Lake City to Clinton to Oak Ridge. You were going from Charlie's Branch to Rosedale to Moore's Camp and all that. And then as the roads got better and everything became more automated, they needed fewer men. And so the equipment, the equipment in the mines right. cut back on the people. Okay. I didn't think about that. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, they eventually just fewer men, they didn't need, you know, to live here. And so they would be people move out or people from outside would get jobs and just drive back and forth over the mountain. And then as the camp houses got empty, the land company would tear them down. You know, so eventually it got to the point where we, we've got one camp house left, one of the original old coal temples, and one of the original company churches. And anything else, you know, you, you drive through those areas today, and you'd never know that anybody lived there. 
So we're you're still pretty remote back here. You're, we talked earlier. You're 21 miles from Interstate 75, and about that far or farther from Interstate 40 area. So it's about 20 miles where they're going to find a fast food restaurant or anything, I guess, around here. And uh, then the Smoky Mountain Brush, or it's called Brushy Mountain Prison, right. is just down the road 11 miles. That's a place that if people come this way to find you. That that's one place that. I definitely, I've not been there myself yet, but I hear that it's a good tour to go through. And they got good food you meet there and stuff. And they so. have concerts there. Yeah. Music concerts and stuff, yeah. And banking, we talked about this before at one time. At one time you run the uh, the railroad through here, the New River New River Express. Was that what? New it's? River Scenic Railway. New River Scenic Railway, yeah. yeah. That was a, a beautiful train that you got there. We talked about that uh, before that you got that out west, didn't you? Yeah, we got the engine out of Arizona, the... Combined car out of New York and then the big passenger car out of Iowa. So, we kind of had a problem with the coal company went bankrupt that owned the tracks and stuff, I believe, didn't they? They had, yeah, they sold, for, before they went under, they sold the tracks to R.J. Corman out of Kentucky to run their coal, to haul their coal out. Well, eventually another company took over the, the coal operations, but you know, we ran it for a year, and then there was an incident, and we had to, they put us off the track. They wouldn't let us run on it, which the incident wasn't our fault, but it happened, and they owned the railroad. They just didn't want the liability of the uh, passenger trains being on there, y'all leasing it. So y'all spent a lot of money getting that going, I'm oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was paying on it after we parked it. Yeah. It was uh, pretty successful. I know that uh, it was back, put, booked up about you couldn't yeah. get on it. So Yeah, in the fall especially. I mean, we would pull out, we could haul, I think it was a hundred and... I believe it was 185 passengers, and it was full every Saturday and Sunday we pulled out. Yeah. Well, now I know I was here a couple of falls ago and talked to you. We went down there to see the, the train. It sits there, and it's one of, it's one of the big tourist attractions oh, yeah. around here. Yeah. I've always thought, that I, I don't guess you own that property where the train's at. But, no, no, we don't own it. But uh, if you did, you could put a gate up and charge $5 a head and make a fortune. Yeah, or fix it back up. Yeah. Vandalize it. <laughs> But I, I went down there was going to film one day, and there were so many people I couldn't even film it because there was about, about 100, uh, uh, you know, side-by-sides there. And yeah, they call it the ghost train or abandoned train. Yeah, there's, I've seen a lot of pictures pop up of it. It's a very popular destination, and it's kind of, somebody has to kind of show you where it's at. You know, you don't, you're not going to get GPS and find or anything, but, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's a beautiful train. It's Like you said, it has been vandalized, unfortunately. Uh, there's a lot of people there who just don't respect history and things and i remember seeing it come by my brother's property uh coming through there over on and on the camel county part yeah next creek coming through and uh, so it's uh, something that i'm gonna try to run down and get a little picture of it too and uh, i'm gonna get ready to get out of here and uh, I'll, I'll be back this is one of the first places i ever documented as far as a general store but uh it didn't the audio back then didn't turn out good so Took me a little while to get back, but this is a really amazing story. Uh, one of the things I didn't talk about was uh, this was a post office at one time too. You still got the old post office uh, stuff right over here, um, and you still got the old pot belly stove. But I see you modernized a little bit. You got yeah. central heat and air yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got city fired. Got city fired. <laughs> Don't don't burn the stove no more. I, it don't look like you're using it. Why? It looks like you're using it for a file cabinet right, there. Yeah. <laughs> file cabinet. But uh, yeah, you used to make used to make food here, but lady got sick that was doing that, and by yourself here, it's hard to cook it's and too much. take care of everything. But uh, it's been a um, great pleasure talking to you, Scott. No, I appreciate too. people like you that's holding on to these old stores, and it's hard to make story. it. It's that's hard to make story. it nowadays, and it takes a lot of determination. I'm gonna be here, you know. I know you like to just go home and quit some days, but. We're going to encourage you to stay here and hopefully some people come by and see you to watch the video. Yeah, the thing that keeps me here the most, I can't imagine us not having a store in this valley. Yeah. That's well, you've done a lot in the valley. Like you said, you talked about the community center. You bought those school and turned it into community center. And I was at one of those festivals and set up at it back in the day, years ago, back in 2013. Set up a booth just looking for stories, talking to people in the area and, and looking for stories. And uh, it was a good time. They played music and had funnel cakes and different things. and. So I know you've been a big part of this community and you'd have to be around for a long time. You're kind of coming a legend in this area at 59 years old. <laughs> you've been here 40 years. So uh, yeah. uh, I'm sure a lot of people remember you just uh, 
you know, as kids growing up here, you know, a lot of people that's 40 now, they probably lived here and come in here as kids, you know, and remember you when you first took over as a young man at 19 years old. Yeah. Driving the school bus down, hauling the grandkids and some of the first students I hauled. That's scary. <laughs> that. I'm not that old. <laughs> I just thought I'd come up this way and see if I could aggravate you. Well, yeah, I said you come through the door, aggravate me. Well, yeah. <laughs> you, got your, you got your president back there getting yeah. ready for getting ready to run him for re-election. I pray God, son. Something got to get. What? Something's got to get. Something's got to get. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't be a Trump fan back here, would you? I see a, a sign oh, yeah. up there. <laughs> He's my hero. He's your hero. He's your hero? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Such is life in Big City. <laughs> I'm here documenting Scott. He's kind of a legend in this area. He's been here 40 years, and the old store's been here since the 30s. And I document old general stores. and. Culture. I see you every now and then on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. me. Yeah, that's why I'm down here, down here, here doing my thing. <laughs> down here doing your thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You okay. local from around here? Oh, Nada. Oh, Nada. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I document a lot over there. R.M. Brooks store. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tiffany's world famous for her bologna. Yeah, you've seen it, ain't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is for sure. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the visit with Scotty there. He has been here for 40 years. He started running the store when he was 19 years old. His grandpa probably started a store across the river there that I showed you a few minutes ago. Um, when he was in his teens probably, he was a hard worker. You know, today, today's times, it seems like the kids are kind of getting softer every year. Back then, in the 1900s at five years old, to start working in a coal mine, taking water to the coal miners. Today, people would, think that's so crazy but you know it made him a, a, a solid worker a hard ma uh, worker he did good here in Charlie's Branch and uh, now his legacy that he started almost a hundred years ago is still living on today and that's one of the things we love documenting I told you I'd tell you how to find this place uh, right here um, you know it's called New River General Store it's in Anderson County, Tennessee, and the best way to find it is, because he doesn't really have a Facebook page for it, is just Google it. On any of the places I mention, uh, usually, unless it's a private residence, you can Google the name of the store, and it's gonna pop up and give you a map there. You're not gonna get here by GPS. This is 20 miles from the nearest interstate, and probably about 15 miles from the nearest internet, so you're gonna wanna print one of those old-fashioned maps out to get here. But come by and tell Scotty you saw the video, here, he's 59 years old. He started here when he was 19. He don't know what would happen if he moved out of this community. They wouldn't have any place to come get bread and milk and different things. So he's sticking in here and holding in and he's one of the last true mom and pop stores that we can find nowadays because all the big chain stores has shut them down. So make sure if you find your way here in East Tennessee to come by and see Scotty and maybe go down to the Brushy Mountain uh, prison there and check it out also. Once again, I'm John Ward with the Appalachian Channel. We'll see y'all next time.